It's local edition from Sacramento. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and we are joined by Bob Hertzberg. He is a member of the California State Senate. Sir, you represent significant portions of the city of Los Angeles, the county of Los Angeles. That's right. And you know that voting in those jurisdictions has been record, just record lows uh, for the last few cycles. It's, it, can, can I just say, Brad, <laughs> it's not even a democracy. This mm. last election, 8.6% turnout in Sherman Oaks in the Valley right. I represent. I'm sorry, corporations have to have more, more of a percentage to get a quorum to operate and do business. It's just, uh, it's horrible. Why do you believe this is happening? I mean, one could argue maybe it's because people are happy. Times are good, no reason to rock the boat. Everyone's doing a fine job. Or is it cynicism? My vote doesn't count. I don't want to get involved. I think partly it's cynicism. It's partly the complexity of the issues. And quite frankly, it's partly because it's very difficult to vote. I mean, come on, you got to meet certain days. If your kid's sick, if you got a problem at work, if your car breaks down, sorry, you can't vote. That's dumb. And so we're fixing that. One could argue, though, that California has been on a path to make it easier. I myself, I am a permanent vote by mail voter. I don't have a reason. They took reasons away. I get my ballot mailed to me every cycle. That's right. You want to make that happen always? Right. Senator Allen and I are joint authoring legislation. Sir, we see counties in the North Californ northern part of California right. that have much higher turnouts because they have a real high propensity to vote by mail. And so what we want to do is to let exactly everybody gets a, a ballot and then they got 14 days to turn them into convenient vote centers at a shopping okay. center, at a school, and make it simpler. So you've got longer time to vote. When I served in government before, right. I did new voting machines because we had the old Florida style sure, voting sure. machines. I did voting to go from 30-day registration to 15-day registration right. had a big impact, but it seems to me that we should take down all barriers and focus on the citizen, on the voter. Tell me what you need and we will give it to make it easier so there's no excuses. And so you can turn in your ballot over those 14 days. That's right. What about on election day? You, there's going to be polling places. There'll just be fewer of them. You'll go to a polling place and you'll be able to vote. Now, many of us, let's say you live in Sherman Oaks, but you work in Hacienda Heights. Right. Uh, you don't get home in time to vote in Sherman That's right. Oaks. That's right. Are you creating a scenario whereby you can vote in Hacienda Heights? That's right. That's right. So if you're working in Hacienda Heights and there's a vote center right down the street at the shopping center, you just drop your ballot there. Two weeks and you got plenty of time. Or you can even ultimately be able to vote in Hacienda Heights. That's They'll print out right. a ballot for you and you'll vote. They'll print out. You'll print your, your, where your zip code is, what your precinct number is, and they'll print a ballot and you'll be able to vote. We should take down every barrier. You know how many times I've had to race home to try to get right. to the voting place? That, that's just dumb. What about registering on the day of the elections? We're same doing day that. Registration. That's right, 100 percent. We have same day registration now, but we really don't. In L.A. County, for example, where there's almost 12 million people, right. you've got to go to Norwalk, which if you know in Los right, Angeles, yeah. it's a schlep for everybody. And it's the edge. It's basically yeah. uh, Orange County, essentially. That's right. And you've got to drive all the way there, and you can register on that day. We're going to actually allow people to register during that time frame at the voting centers. I've got to ask you about a proposal that was floated last year. Some saw it as kooky. I saw it as at least someone was thinking. You may know Nathan Hockman. Of course. He is the uh, chair of the LA Ethics Commission. He Wonderful guy. Yeah, he floated an idea called Lotteria, whereby in the city of Los Angeles, um, there would be a lottery for everyone who votes. Right. You know, the mere act of voting puts you in the lottery, and whoever voted that day, they could get pulled out and win, I don't know, $25,000. Right. What do you make of that? I mean, a lot of print uh, on it. It's, it's, it's kind of intellectually painful. Why should you have to pay people to vote? But at the same time, if it doesn't really cost much money and, and you right. can save dollars, at some level, I think the participation is so important. I, I would entertain it. I mean, I do think it's a little kooky. There's no mm -hmm. question. But Nathan is a fabulously intelligent <laughs> right. guy. And, I, and, and honestly, let's be open. Let's be creative. Let's think big. It's worth having those discussions. So when I was in high school, I did an exchange program in Belgium. And I was fascinated. Even back then, I was kind of a political dork. They have so, something's never changed. Something's never changed. <laughs> they have mandatory voting, compulsory right. voting. Right. Australia, the Australia same. has it. What do you think of that model? I mean, I don't know if it's American in its core, but. Mandatory voting? Yeah, no, I thought about it. I thought about it. I got to tell you. And you've got other countries where people go home on the weekends and they vote right. on the weekends and it becomes a fiesta for sure, the family. Sure, sure. In Costa Rica. Right. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Abe Lincoln gave right. uh, 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 workers, government workers, a two-week pass and a, and a free railroad pass to go home and mm -hmm. vote. 
I mean, there have, look, it's tough. And, and hopefully we get to people beyond just voting to vote and, right. and, and read a slate card, but actually to think about it, that's a secondary aspect. But anything you do, because it, it enhances the legitimacy of the democracy. Now, what's interesting, while California is working to ease voting, make it easier to go to the polls, some of our sister states are going in the opposite direction. One person, one vote. One right. person, one vote. That's right. before the Supreme Court. Right. I was recently in Alabama. And I saw a billboard which said, don't forget to bring your identification right. to the polling place. You need picture ID. Right. So I want to get a sense from you as kind of a student of history and government. Why is it that we see such divergent views on voting? You, you know, I think in Wisconsin, they're trying to make the period with which to register longer. What's going on here that we're getting divergent views on voting? Political interests political interests, getting the people that you want to turn out in the election or not turn out in the election. It's that simple. Why, when this country was founded, was it Protestant white men who owned land? And then women, and, and even when you got African Americans, you had poll tax, right. and you, you, you have literacy tests, things that we saw in the movie Selma. Mm -hmm. Those are all ways to control the outcome, because there's fear. In California, you know, Upton Sinclair in 1934 ran for governor, and everybody did everything they could to intimidate and create a chilling effect because right. they were afraid the masses were going to overturn the power structure. I mean, politics at the core is a fight for power, and interest groups basically try to intimidate or have impacts or, or enhance, bring people out one way or the other, but it's all about power. I also want to ask you about new Americans. Yeah. New Americans often come from countries where governments are oppressive, right. where they just don't want to get involved, stay away from the government at all costs. Or even worse, it's even just fear. Fear. And Deep fear. So, and yeah. so when you think about new Americans from Central America, from Asia, how do you incentivize them to want to vote? Oh, you don't have to incentivize them. Let me tell you, they're all there <coughs> the first day on their, in the police. They are dying to vote. That is the least of our problems. In terms of, you, we, I've looked at studies before in terms of new Americans, they turn out in the 90 some percentiles. It's just like they pay their credit and they, they're just here, they're proud to be here, they're dying to vote, they want to be part of this democracy from all corners of the world, from Africa to India to China to South America. It's unbelievable the turnouts when you go and see those. And you see the lines when you have the, the, the judges swearing them in and they're all getting their registration cards. No, they're, they're, they're voting. But at the same time, it seems as if that communities of color aren't voting in significant numbers. New Americans may be voting, but why do you see that happening? What is it? It's economic. It's economic. It, it, it's economic and it's age. When you do this, look at the studies, and you'll say, like with the Latino community, well, half the community is under 24. When you look at under mm -hmm. people under 24, they don't turn out. When you look at economic factors, people that have more wealth turn out than people who have less wealth. What are the reasons? Trying to deal on a day-to-day -day life, what you've got to deal with. You've got problems with your kids. You've got all kinds of things. You can't study these issues. You're trying to make a living and cook dinner and all those other things. It's, it's more difficult. And so the notion of, of giving a longer time to vote, giving people more time to participate, I think is more sensitive to those kinds of issues and hopefully will bring in a broader swath of folks. So your bill has made it out of the Senate on the yep. way to the Assembly. That's right. Your old former body, you were Speaker of the Assembly. I was. What are your friends saying over there? Uh, look, they like it. They like it. They think it's going to be good. I think the governor will sign it. I think we'll make it all the way. Senator Allen has done a great job so far. He's the chairman of the right. Elections Committee. Uh, uh, we've been working with Senator, I mean, Assemblymember Ridley Thomas, who's right. the chairman of the Assembly of Committee. Of course, of course. And so I, I think it's going to be good. I think, it, you know, I've been working on this issue for years and years and years because it's one of these basic fundamental issues about democracy to try to enhance participation. I'm just as I've traveled the world, I've been so fortunate. Right. And I'm embarrassed when people say, oh, you talk about democracy and you say how great your country is and look at these levels of participation. And they're not wrong. It is remarkable how we cherish our democracy, we cherish right. our right to vote, and right. yet we're not going to the polls. Right. You're going to try to change that. That's right. You'll come back, talk to us about SB 163? Absolutely. His name is Bob Hertzberg. He is a member of the California State Senate. My name is Brad Palmer. We are coming to you from Sacramento on Local Edition.